All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Laura Adams, who is in Vero Beach in Florida. How are you doing, Laura? I am doing great. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Laura is an actually recognized personal finance and business expert author of nine books and audio books, including Money Money Girls, Smart Moves to Grow Rich, and your, your latest book, Money Smart Solopreneur, a personal finance system for freelancers, entrepreneurs, and side hustlers. And what we're gonna talk about today is how to create financial safety nets, so tips for individuals and small business owners to minimize risk and protect hard-earned assets and survive any crisis. So, um, as we dive into this, Laura, there seems to be a lot more, certainly we're hearing about a lot more people who are thinking of going out on their own, thinking of becoming solopreneurs, the, you know, the great resignation, it sounds like the great migration in the Serengeti or whatever, but we're hearing about the great, the great resignation. So as people start to think about going into business on their own, or they have gone into business on their own, um, what are some of the initial things, financial things that they may overlook to protect themselves from the get go as opposed to, you know, find out the hard way? Yeah, it's a great question. And a lot of people are really getting, I think, a little more comfortable with the idea of being their own business owner, whether it's starting something new or using an app. Um, there's just so many, there's so many opportunities right now for folks to earn extra income on the side or even make that into a full-time business if they really enjoy it. Um, and I think one of the main things that many folks that I talk to overlook um, about starting a business um, is just thinking about insurance, you know, kind of the what ifs. What if something terrible goes wrong? What if I get into an, a car accident while I'm, uh, you know, delivering groceries? Or, you know, what could happen if, let's say, there were um, a fire at my home and all of my inventory were to, to get uh, damaged? You know, those sorts of things um, I think a lot of people will overlook because they're really excited about their business, you know, opportunity. And they get very focused on generating revenue. And that's certainly very important. Um, and you do want to test out your idea. You you know, probably before investing a whole lot in, in your business, if it's something you're doing on the side. But I would say that getting certain insurances up front can be really wise. Um, and I work with a company called U.S. Insurance Agents. That's a place where you can go to look at things like commercial auto insurance. This is something mm -hmm. I would recommend business insurance, you know, if you're working from home. So I think a lot of people kind of think, well, I've got home insurance or I've got renter's insurance, so I'm going to be okay. But what they don't realize is that if they've got business assets or they're seeing customers at their home, their personal coverages are not going to help them with any type of business related claim. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent advice. And I, and I would agree with you. I think that's probably not the first thing that pops into people's heads. And you're right, the more people who are working out of home or doing gig work or whatever may not realize the limitations of their personal insurance. Yeah, you know, so that's one thing I would say, um, you know, really talking with somebody, um, it's free, you know, to, to talk to a, an agent, somebody who's an expert, and, and kind of pick their brain, you know, say, what am I, what am I missing here? What, you know, what could I, where could I get into trouble that maybe I'm not thinking about? Um, because maybe, you know, we don't like to think about all the negative aspects of business. We want to think about the positive parts of it. Uh, but there are professionals out there who do nothing but think about, you know, all the what ifs. So getting their input is really key. And like I said, it could be as easy as a, as the you know, 15 minute phone conversation with someone. Um, most brokers will work with you free of charge. So look at that. Um, also looking at things like, you know, what are your emergency savings goals? You know, do you have enough runway, financial runway to make sure that, you know, if the business doesn't do as well as you think it will, that you're going to be okay financially. I do find that most people don't save enough upfront 
Um, and mm -hmm. so then all of a sudden they panic when the business is sort of eating up a lot of their, let's say, personal savings. They're having to, to invest a lot more in the business than they anticipated. Um, and all of a sudden they feel very panicky about, you know, a cash crunch. So if yeah. you can save and, and really make sure you've got plenty of savings, that's going to make sure you're not only your business has enough, uh, has enough resources to, to keep going, but personally, you're going to be okay as well. Yeah, because I, I do think that is uh, that is one of the areas that maybe bites a lot of people because you're right. I mean, if you're going to start your own business or whatever, you're you're probably very optimistic and it's very easy to get trapped in those spreadsheet exercises where you go, oh, what if we do this and all this money comes in, blah. But the reality and the fortunate reality is that things tend to take longer than we anticipate. So to your point, planning for yeah maybe you're optimistic maybe you're even certain but planning for you know six months more than you need or three months more than you need is is always a good thing exactly yeah you know and another safety net i always encourage folks uh, to do is to keep that day job you know as long as you can if you are doing something on the side um, you might get really excited about it and think, oh, this is something I want to do. But if you can keep the day job just a little bit longer, maybe than you want to, that gives you the ability to save a little bit more, um, maybe keep those benefits that you've got at work. Um, it's kind of like a, a almost like an insurance policy um, when you've got that that additional source of income. Um, and yes, it might be very taxing on your time, you know, and your uh, ability to to you know have a social life, you know. It's hard working a day job and, and doing something on the side, um, but if you can if you can really just make a sacrifice for let's say six months or even a year, you're going to find that you've got just that much more security um, when you do decide your time. It's time to leap out on your own. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a lot better than going back after six months saying, "Can I have my job back, please?" <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, the other thing I think uh, that often bites people as well is, especially when they you know, start a business is, yeah, you get excited about it. Maybe you start to get a few clients or whatever your business is and you get excited about the revenue, but revenue doesn't equate to cash flow. And I think people often for often they know it, but they overlook it. The fact that they're so excited about, oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've sold some deals now. But the reality is you may not see that money for 30, 60, 90 days. Who knows? So again, cash flow is important. That's right. Yeah, John, that, that's such a good point because um, we do have to really look at expenses. So if you haven't invested in a, a good software program, you know, something like QuickBooks where you can really easily generate reports and see where, where are you right now? You know, where are your expenses? Um, and initially, we typically have to spend a lot on a new business to get it up and running. Um, but you really need to monitor expenses quite carefully to make sure that um, you know you're not you're not overspending, um, and to make sure that you understand you know if you are putting in that initial capital, how long will it take you to recoup that, and, and try to have a plan um, to become profitable within a reasonable period of time? And so, yes, if you are not monitoring what is the actual profit from my business, um, it is very easy to just think you're doing great because you've got revenue. Revenue is key, but you know, profit is what allows us to reinvest in our businesses, you know, and ulti ultimately make them sustainable. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I think another thing, and you probably come across this a lot when you're working with small business people is, is just the discipline of separating all the finances, like and not co-mingling with personal, with business and all of that kind of stuff, but keeping that kind of clean from the get go. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's critical, especially if you're not somebody who enjoys bookkeeping. Um, you know, if you're somebody that is kind of meticulous about categorizing expenses within a, a program, maybe you can get away with commingling some things for a period of time. But ultimately, you're going to want to have a separate business bank account, a business credit card if needed. Um, that makes it really easy to make sure that you are um, you're not commingling those expenses um, and any personal revenue with the business revenue. Um, so again, this is another reason why having a great 
type of program. And you might need to experiment with a couple different types. There are many great accounting and bookkeeping programs out there. Some of them are a lot more complicated than others. Um, so depending on what your needs are, you know, are you really just looking at um, needing to create proposals that you can then turn into invoices. You know, is billing something that is really um, going to take up a good bit of your time? You may need a program that's really strong um, on invoicing and billing. But for other people, you may just need something that really allows you to track uh, lots of expenses. So let's say you're buying inventory. You're, you know, you've got a lot of business expenses to, um, to maintain and you need to know what your cost of goods are. Um, you need a program that's going to help you with that. So again, Talking to a professional can be key here. If you've got a good accountant, um, they can help you get set up with the program and make sure that, um, you know, maybe you want them to do it for you. But, you know, in most cases, these programs are quite simple, you know, and easy to use if you kind of know what you need to be doing on a regular basis. So getting those programs set up, yes, it takes a little bit of time in the beginning and you may need a little bit of advice, um, but it will pay off because it's gonna simplify your record keeping and it's gonna make sure that at the end of the year when you're ready to send all this good stuff to your accountant, it's gonna be very organized and it'll be a matter of just running reports, sending that off to your accountant and you will be super glad that you don't have to spend many hours you know, preparing for tax time yeah yeah you don't want that scramble where you're you're surrounded by pieces of paper and trying no. to find out <laughs> emails and all of that um so what what are some of the other uh financial best practices that you would advise uh small businesses and solopreneurs to look at yeah you know for a lot of people they get very bogged down in you know, what should I be doing in terms of, let's say, uh, a legal entity or, you know, a business license, you know, they, they really get bogged down in, in all of the, um, the details and the minutia and all of that is very important. But I would, I would say, you really need to test your idea first, you know, before you kind of spend a lot of time and, and energy on um, expenses or legal entities, figure out if you really want to do, you know, your business, if there is a market for it, get some some sort of testing going to find out, are there customers? Um, can you charge rates that are going to be high enough to, to be profitable? And you know, ultimately, do you enjoy it? If you don't enjoy the work, you're not likely to stick with it. So getting kind of a proof of concept going is key. And if you do find that, yes, you've got, you know, you've got a great idea um, or you just enjoy maybe this doing this work on the side, whatever it may be, consulting, writing, you know, there are a lot of opportunities these days. Um, if you do enjoy it and you see that, yes, you can begin to make some money. I always tell people at about the $10,000 mark, that's the point at which you really want to get serious about it. Once you've got $10,000 in income, that's when you definitely want to make sure you've got um, a legal entity set up, or at least you've talked to somebody about whether you need to incorporate or not. Um, you're thinking about getting that separate business bank account. Um, you're really looking at separating all those expenses and you're, you're taking it more seriously. Um, but before that point, I always encourage people just to kind of um, go for it, you know, really uh, try, try it, um, not to be scared about all of the kind of um, the details because a lot of people will let that stand in the way of just getting out there and making it happen. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's great advice because there's a kind of a, a good news, bad news, because, I mean, the good news is it's very easy nowadays to set up a business. You know, you've got all sorts of services. You can set up business. There's all sorts of technology. There's all sorts of software and uh, SaaS uh, businesses that can help. So which is great. But to your point, you could get you could get kind of sidetracked by setting up this lovely business and having everything in place. And as you say, with without really spending the time of proving the concept yeah yeah it's it's important so you know we don't want to overlook all of those things so i'm sure. not saying you know don't create a a, a a a legal entity and it really does depend on the type of business you're starting so if you are starting something that has um you know a lot of potential legal liability maybe something like you're catering food um you know where you have the opportunity to 
to get into a lawsuit, by all means, you know, make sure that you've got your, your legal, you know, incorporation done right away. But for most people, if you're looking at something like consulting or maybe even being uh, becoming a sales rep for a particular product, you know, you've got, um, you know, some, some leeway there to, to really act as a sole proprietor uh, for some time uh, without really risking too much. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a good point as well. And then, um, I mean, obviously, that uh, I think this affects a lot of people when they start something new. There's the initial excitement, and then there's the motivation dip when it, all the stuff becomes, you know, piles in on top of them. I mean, how do you so how do you encourage people through that period? Yeah, you know, there's um, a lot of overwhelm, I think, you know, when you kind of get into business and you realize that you're not just a salesperson, you know, you are your own uh, accountant, you know, you are HR, you are doing everything. And that can be quite overwhelming for folks that have never really understood all of the, the pieces that go into, uh, into a functioning business. And I would say, get help. Don't be afraid to look for professional guidance. There's so many folks out there, you know, whether it's a tax professional, um, you know, a business attorney, if you're looking at something like, um, you know, intellectual property, make sure that you're, you know, working with an IP attorney, um, really understanding who are the professionals that I need to work with. And it could just be having conversations with people. It doesn't necessarily mean investing a lot of money with them, but it could just be getting on the phone and saying, saying, hey, I've, you know, I'm having trouble with this, or I have questions about this, you know, where should I go? If you were me, what, what would you do? Where, where should I go? I think a lot of people don't ask for help. Um, and they think, you know, they, they're the business owner, they should be able to do it all. And while I love that attitude, um, it typically, you know, it, it typically means that you don't know what you don't know, right? And so in order to get guidance, we have to be a little humble and willing to, to ask for it. Um, so that's one area that I think people really just kind of need to understand. You're not going to be able to do everything. Um, you know, it, it, and it doesn't make sense, you know, in a lot of cases to try to do everything, um, outsourcing certain components of your business is going to be essential for growth. So figuring out what do you like to do, you know, what are your strengths and then kind of outsourcing everything else that you can. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a great point is identifying, identifying your strengths because yeah, maybe at the beginning you have to do things that you're not very good at or you don't like. But I think identifying those and, as you say, outsourcing them is a really good idea because otherwise, let's face it, if we're not very good at things and we don't really like them, we're never going to do them very well. No, absolutely. And, you know, but you're in business not only to make money, but to, you know, enjoy the business as well. And so you do want to identify those things that you enjoy. Um, and so I think that's a gradual process that business owners go through. And, you know, maybe over time you're figuring out, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm not really enjoying the, the marketing or maybe the social media. You know, this is an area where I can get help that isn't going to cost an arm and a leg. You know, it's something that you can easily outsource and probably find somebody to do a, a, a much better job than you would. Um, and when you think about the time that it would take you, the value of your time as the owner, um, it's really a bargain, you know, to outsource that and, and get a, a much like, you know, better job done um, at the same time. So that's a win-win. Yeah. And then I guess um, that the last question is, uh, and this is again, you know, around finances. I mean, I think the other part is like, like you said about people getting overwhelmed, but I think getting overwhelmed now because there's, you know, there's so many changes in regulations and things coming and like taxes. I mean, sometimes from a business owner perspective, it, it can be quite overwhelming trying to keep up with what is the latest situation and what's the best strategy for me. Yeah. You know, if you can keep it simple, especially in the beginning, that's key. So one thing I recommend is if you can work with contractors versus employees in the beginning, that's one area where you can really simplify your life because there's a ton of regulations and rules when it comes to having employees. You kind of um, step into a whole new realm of, of, you know, legal responsibility. But with freelancers and contractors, um, you know, a lot of cases you can find just, you know, incredible resources, very talented people who will be just as committed to you as a client um, as an employee would. 
Um, in fact, in some cases, maybe even more committed to you because you know they're another business person. Um, and so you're working business to business, B2B. And that can really be a great way to scale your business. It's almost like you're working with a partner um, you know, versus kind of a, a boss employee relationship. So I do think that's an area where folks can simplify. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't need to hire employees down the road if you really want to scale the business. Um, but that's an area that I think uh, you, know, you can really um, help yourself, I think, in, you know, at least in the beginning and finding some great contractors. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic piece of advice, uh, to be honest. Uh, and there's so many, and it's so easy nowadays. And the great thing is that you have you know, sites like Upwork and that where you can find. And the thing is, they don't even have to be here. They could be anywhere in the world. It depends on what you're looking for that person to do. So you can find somebody to fit your budget. You can find somebody to fit your skill set and everything. You know? And I think sometimes... Uh, if you haven't hired people and you haven't had per employees like that, I think people underestimate, uh, you know, how, how taxing that can be, put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is a, I think, a psychological responsibility, you know, not in addition to um, the actual paperwork and, and uh, legal responsibility there that you've got. So, yeah, um, I think, you know, there are a lot of like, maybe little shortcuts that people can take like that in the beginning um, that can just keep things as simple as possible so that you can really focus on what you do best, what are your core competencies, um, and then thinking about where are you where are you earning? So maybe you've got certain customers or types of customers that tend to be the bulk of your revenue. You really want to double down on those types of customers, find more of them, and you know, do away with the customers that are either less profitable or more time consuming for you, um, and really try to focus in on what is the offering um, that is going to make you the most profitable. Um, you know, in many cases, we try to do a lot of things, but you know, getting more focused and, and niche in our services can really pay off in a lot of cases. So I would encourage folks to, you know, analyze your revenue, not just, you know, in terms of how well you're doing, but in terms of where's that revenue coming from? What are the particular customers um, that you're, you're finding are the most profitable for you? And then go out and find more of them. Yeah, no, I, I, again, I mean, I think that's great advice because it is uh, obviously tempting at the beginning to grab everything. Um, to do work at, you know, knockdown rates and all of that kind of stuff. But quick, that'll kill you quick, you know, pretty quickly. So ultimately, you have to you have to segment and figure out where to put your energies. So I think great, great advice. Um, listen, all of uh, Laura's information is going to be below this video. So I would really encourage you to check it out. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Yeah, so I am, you know, working as a personal finance um, advisor, consultant. I work with a lot of different companies, either as a media representative, uh, content creator, you know, really helping them uh, reach their audiences and, and communicate positive financial messages. And I work with usinsuranceagents.com. Um, you know, helping kind of get the word out about insurance. So whether it's auto, home, life, health, business, I would encourage folks to reevaluate your insurance needs. The new year is the perfect time to do that. So, you know, if you go and visit, you'll be able to see what, you know, what you may need. Uh, it's not good to overpay for insurance, but you don't want to be underinsured either. There's kind of a sweet spot there for both personal and business. So we need to reevaluate that every year and make sure that you're getting the best deal that you can get on insurance. So I would encourage folks to make that one of your New Year's resolutions. Yeah, no, I think that's a great a great piece of advice. Yeah, let's face it, we all hate paying out money for insurance and all of that. But I tell you, when the time comes, you're you're very glad you did. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Listen, thanks again, Laura. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.